Hello everyone and welcome back to Closets Gaming. Today we are going to take a look at Desync. This hardcore first person twitch shooter gives you the chance to test your reflexes and hand to eye coordination inside a highly stylized world full of machines out there to kill you. It is available on Steam for 14 euros and 99 cents or your regional equivalent. Man, I have to start by saying this game is hard. I mean really hard. Unless you have been religiously playing Dark Souls while keeping yourself on top in shooter games, this thing will certainly not be a breeze to go through for you. But first of all, we should talk about the mechanics the game has on offer. In its core, this is just a very old school shooter that had its difficulty level cranked up to the max and mixed up with a few nice twists. The first and the most used twist, the one because of which I mentioned Dark Souls, is the dodge mechanic. But even the comparison to Dark Souls really isn't perfect, because while you can chain your dodges in Dark Souls, you certainly can do it to the degree you can do it here in Desync. The amount of dodges you can actually do here is literally infinite, and you will be dodging a lot, because if you won't, you will die. Quickly. The second mechanic you will need to be using to keep yourself around are essentially combos, called sinks here. These are different sequences of attacks or combination of attacks and movements that will grant you different bonuses. And since these bonuses include things like help and ammunition, you will really need to use them, otherwise you will be very limited in what you are able to do. And I really, really like the combo mechanic. It allows you to choose your playstyle in a very interactive way. You can choose to be really aggressive, being on the edge the whole time but also taking health back from your enemies. Or be really defensive, keeping your distance and spending a lot of ammunition and regaining that back with your combos. I don't really think I've seen this kind of playstyle choice in such an awesome way. Usually the most you can do is to pick some talents that increase your proficiency with a particular weapon, but here, here you change it with mid battle. And often you will have to, because different enemies require different ways to engage them Especially the ones with the shield really require you to pick the moment to engage them. So, when we are on the topic of enemies, there really is a nice variety of them. From really simple enemies that take a few shots and die, through tanky monsters with giant swords that require a great deal of care before you engage them, up to giant bosses that you will almost certainly won't kill on your first try. Actually, fun fact, to date, only about 17% of players who own this game on Steam have actually killed the first boss. Not only do the enemies come in a variety of sizes, they also vary a lot when it comes to their mechanics. Sure, some of them share their mechanics and almost all of them host a combination of both melee and range attacks, so we can't just run away from enemies, because they will just cheat you. And I promise you, you will learn to hate some of them. I particularly hate these little pink spider thingies that come at you and will jump on your face, continuously dealing damage to you until you die. Maybe it's me being stupid, but I just haven't found a way to get off them of your face once that happens, so whenever I found them in an encounter, I had to focus really hard to kill them before focusing on the rest of the enemies. Anyways, back to the mechanics. Other than the combos that allow you to get benefits, there are three more ways to get a bit of an edge over your foes. The first are offhand weapons. These come in a few forms like a shield to block incoming damage or a pistol to slow your enemies making them easier to hit. You can pick the offhand while you're in essentially the lobby and it will spawn in the level once you killed and gathered enough energy from slaughtered enemies. I've heard that some people have an issue with the offhand controls being bind to Q and E, but to be honest, I haven't had a problem with them being bound there, but you can easily rebind them if you want to. The second mechanic making the game at least a bit easier is the core. The core is essentially a usable item, a potion. You can again decide what kind of core you want to use in the game's lobby and again, you do have a variety of options here, from your most basic heal to damage boost and a few others. I personally stuck with the healing option since I'm not really that great at hardcore shooters so I figured the extra healing will prove more than useful. And it certainly did. But if you feel more comfortable with a different kind of playstyle, you certainly do have the option. And the last mechanic that allows you to pre-customize your playstyle are the weapon upgrades. 
Throughout each new level, there are shards and you need to collect these as they allow you to create upgrades for your weapons. The upgrade system is really simple, just one of four stats like damage or the fire rate. And the nice thing is that the game actually knows how many shards you will have available, so it scales the difficulty with that in mind. But I'm not saying that you need to upgrade your weapons to be able to progress. It's just that the game won't become a power fantasy where you start as a weakling and become essentially a god as you progress towards the end. And I've mentioned the lobby, so I should probably tell you a bit more about it. But there really isn't that much to tell. It's just a central room from where you choose your weapons, your upgrades, and even the level you will engage. That's all. And about the weapons. You can have four of them at yourself at any given time, once you acquire them. Each of them has two firing modes. The basic one, like, like a pretty much regular weapon, like a pistol, shotgun, or a rocket launcher, and the alternate fire either enhances the power of the weapon while using up more ammo, or creates a completely different kind of weapon out of it. For instance, the shotgun's alternate fire mode shows kind of a rotating spear that lingers in the air for a while, damaging enemies that walk through it. And I should probably mention that the basic pistol actually had sort of infinite ammo, as the energy it uses as its ammo continuously recharges. And the last interesting the game I will talk about is how the game takes its score mechanic. This is actually very reminiscent of Spectacle Fighters, where it's based on the cool combos you manage to do and you will get a score assigned. But here it takes account not only the combos you do, but they do still play a major role, but also the amounts of damage you took, how much you healed, and how many tries you actually needed to finish a fight. And the driving force to get better scores are leaderboards. And this adds a layer of replayability into the game that it otherwise wouldn't probably have. So when we take all into consideration, this is a very impressive hardcore shooter. The combat is engaging and fun as hell. The gunplay feels awesome and even though you clearly realize you're not shooting real guns because of the models, you feel how much power is being pumped through the weapons. The dashing gives an additional level to the combat as you need to be constantly on the move to avoid enemy attacks, using line of sight to get from homing projectiles and dodging melee attacks that are really painful to your health. But what I really love the most about desync is the fact that the combo system allows for so many different playstyles to be successful at beating the game. I don't think I had as much fun while playing a shooter since last year's Doom, and if I would be forced to decide between them, I'm not sure who would win purely on the fun factor. The one issue I had with the game, though some might call it a feature, is the fact that I really felt like I needed to finish that encounter before I quit. It's that one more turn syndrome we all know so well, and here it's only amplified by the fact that restarting an encounter is just one button push away, so I'm not really complaining about it, as it only proves that the game is really fun, stressful, but fun. The one thing I've really been missing from the game is some sort of story. The visual and text of the game does somehow imply that you're in some way inside a computer or doing some sort of really futuristic hacking, but nothing is ever said for sure. And just a hint of a story could really add towards the game and a great story could transform this into a real masterpiece. But sadly, there is none that I could find. Let's now talk about the graphics. As you can easily see from the footage in the background, D-Sync has a really distinct visual. It is certainly heavily inspired by the Tron movies, but it changes the color palette and adds a bit more, hmm, let's say comic -y spice to it. And I gotta say, I find this style really fitting for this kind of game. The colors really make the enemies easy to see, and that is something really important in a hardcore shooter. Since the game uses this style that doesn't really allow for that much detail in the textures nor in the particle effects, it is really hard to assess how well the game is done apart from going after the style itself. I personally like it. Not saying it's my favorite thing in the world though, just I find it fitting and well made. But whether you like it, that's just something that's up to you. The only thing I can really mention is the graphical design of enemies. And I do have one small gripe with it. I wish the style of enemies are done in would make it a little bit more clear whether they are primarily melee or ranged enemies, 
but I do understand why it is hard to do when they can usually do both kinds of attacks. And now on to the music and sound effects. Sadly, this is probably the weakest point of the game in my opinion. As it is the case often with games these days, the music isn't really bad, it's just uninspired in my opinion, sort of generic. But this really is a game you will most likely be playing your own playlist to and then you won't mind at all. Sound effects on the other hand were really nice. The weapon sound really carries a weight to them and especially when you're playing in headphones makes you feel like you're really firing a unreal weapon. Lastly, we have to talk about the game's performance. And I'm more than glad to report that the game really doesn't have any issues to talk about. The frame rate was high and smooth, stuttering was non-existent and no crashes at all. What more can you wish for? Nothing really. So in conclusion, the game is incredibly hard yet fun as hell to play. That is one of the best combinations for anyone looking for a challenge in a game. If you like either shooters or really hard games, these things should really be in your library. And if you like competing for the best spot in a leaderboard, this will also suit you. But if you hate hard games, you should probably stay away from desync, as you will just get increasingly irritated by the game's difficulty. Well, that's it for today guys, hope you liked the review, and if you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to my channel for more gaming reviews, or comment if you had something you would like to add. And if you didn't like the video, well, dislike it. See you all next time with more gaming content.